Hello everyone and welcome back to Kochi's Red Hot. This is the show where the chips are crunchy, the salsa spicy, and we find out if you can dip into the heat. Today's guest is the soccer team. Well, part of the soccer team is Coach Santos and Celeste Medrano. You guys can say hi. Hello. <laughs> hi everyone. Hello. And uh, yeah, they've been absolutely killing it in the soccer field. Um, if you guys go to their games, they're absolutely amazing. And I want to say thank you guys so much for coming out here. Thank you. Thank, right, you, thank for you, you guys. Us. Uh, before we get started, I want to ask, how's you guys' spicy level? Do you, what's like the spiciest thing you guys have ever eaten? I'm a weenie. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. My my wife can probably handle more spice than I do. So, I'm mm -hmm. um, pretty okay. I pretty was okay. raised on pinta beans, so mm -hmm. we'll see. Uh, I think it will be good. But how about let's get into the first one, Miles. <sighs> you guys ready? Ladies first. <laughs> <laughs> the ladies first. <laughs> I got you. All right, there we go. Cheers. <laughs> I am in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> that one tastes good. I no, like no. I like, this is how it tastes, like, I'm in trouble. <laughs> 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 All right, so coach, I want to ask you, um, tell, how about you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, so I'm from here, Arizona. Um, you know, I didn't really, if you would have told me that I'd end up being a coach out here, I honestly wouldn't really believe it. I, I thought I was going to, you know, go into law enforcement. I, I studied psychology and criminal mm -hmm. justice. Um, and I thought that was the route to go. The only reason I got into coaching was because uh, my sister's high school team needed, well, my alma mater needed a, a coach. Mm -hmm. And um, my couple buddies needed a Sunday league team to play on. So I started that and then I got involved with the high school. and. Uh, one thing led to another. I, I kind of liked it. I became a teacher. Um, I got the opportunity to, to, you know, volunteer at Arizona Western, and uh, mm -hmm. I quit there after a season. <clears throat> um, just didn't have the time, and now um, I got a phone call from, you know, the coach at the time, Ricky, and mm -hmm. he was like, "This is an opportunity you should probably look into." I told him no the first time, and. Um, I talked to my wife, my my mentors, everybody, and they were just like, you know what, this is an opportunity you should probably take before, you know, you really settle down, have kids, and um, you know, and I really thought about it, and I took it, and I'm, you know, I did two years of uh, assistant coaching out here, and this year I got the chance to be the head coach. Mm, okay, so this is your first year being the head coach, correct? Yes. Because uh -huh, I remember last year you were the assistant coach, right? Yeah. Uh, how long have you been here at Coaches? This is well, this is going to be the third season. Oh, overall. the third yeah. season. Yeah. Okay. How would you say you 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 try to build a winning environment? Well, it's I think the first things first is is projecting what kind of kids you want here. Mm -hmm. um, I think from get go, it's talking to a lot of kids, making sure you bring you know. Obviously, talent is one thing and winning games and stuff like that, but mm -hmm. bringing kids that are going to understand what it means to be here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like I said, this is a unique environment. Like we get the chance, you know, there's, it's, it's a standalone campus. So mm -hmm. um, they have to understand, you know, one, they're here to improve on their game, focus on schooling and, and move on. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the first avenue of setting those standards of like, you know, if you want to be good, if you want to reach those standards, you have to act like them. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And what would you say your coaching philosophy is like with uh, the way you you approach it and the way you, like, you train the, your players and prepare them for a game? I tried, I think the biggest thing, I, I'm very silly as a person. I think a lot of my kids will tell you that. I try. I want you, them to have fun. Um, and mm -hmm. the reality of it is, is like, it's a sport. Mm -hmm. It's a game. Uh, they they gotta enjoy it. Uh, <laughs> I feel that's it, playing soccer, especially one of the few sports where you can't fake it. Mm -hmm. you, know, uh, you have to really love to run for fun. Yeah. You know, you have to really love it. And so, 
Um, I think that I want to, like, I'm honestly a glorified cheerleader at times, and sometimes I have to be that bad person too. Mm -hmm. um, I like to have more personal relationships in the set of, like, if you screw up, I'm going to tell you on your, on your own. I'm going to tell you on the side, like, hey, mm -hmm. this should have been done better. Hey, that is unacceptable. Hey, mm -hmm. like, good job back there. Hey, like, keep it going. And, mm -hmm. and I think that, I mean, I've always liked that way of coaching because I, I mean, um, not to throw shade at any past coaches or anything like that, but I've always had coaches that weren't afraid to tell me what it was. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and I think that um, knowing what you need to do, but doing it on the side is probably the best avenue, at least for me, because a lot of girls, a lot of individuals tend to, you know, can be shut down, and especially in this in this day and age where, um, you, you know, you have to, you have to be, one, creating a warm environment, but B, make an environment where they aren't afraid to make mistakes and improve and grow. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> this sounds like very good, very good advice for any future coaches out there <laughs> that want to become coaches. Thank you so much for sharing that. And with that being said, how about we get into the, the next one, <laughs> into mild or medium, my bad. Yeah, you ladies first, buddy. You ladies first. You're my test dummy. <laughs> you make a face, I know I'm really in trouble. Okay. Uh, it's step, I'm match it. Whatever it's a do. step up. All right, I'm going to take a little bit off. All right, ready? I got you. All right, there you go. Cheers. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm in definite trouble. <laughs> Oh yeah, that one's that one's good. <clears throat> I like that one. I right. just grew hair on my chest. <laughs> so now, um, talking about being a student athlete, uh, could you tell us a bit about yourself? Uh, my name is Celeste Medrano. I'm from Tucson, Arizona. Uh, <laughs> I went to Desert View High School, and it's right now my second year here at Cochise. Mm -hmm. Are you okay? <laughs> I'm, I'm not okay. <laughs> I'm good. Okay. Uh, it's my second year here at Cochise. Mm, I really like the... I really like the school, honestly. When Santos and Ricky of last year reached out to me to come visit the school, I was a little skeptical, but once I got here, got to know some of the players, mm -hmm. I really liked the, the atmosphere of the team and the program that I knew Santos was going to build and so. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and did you play soccer your whole life? Like what kind of got you into soccer? You know, what inspired you to pursue the sport to this level, basically of being a college athlete now? Uh, I started, I started soccer on accident. <laughs> uh, my <laughs> younger brother's team, his little league team needed a goalkeeper because mm -hmm. <laughs> the goalkeeper from his team like hurt his toe or something and uh. so they said Celeste put this on and get in the goal mm -hmm. uh, they scored 14 on me <laughs> but <laughs> but the, the <laughs> <laughs> but the coach uh, decided you know with a little work she'll she'll be fine mm -hmm. and I played as a goalkeeper for his for that team for around two years and then in middle school is when I started going into more sports. I did basketball, I did a volleyball, but soccer stuck with me a lot because it was really fun and I loved the sport and fell in love and been playing since then. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> would you say that the coaches last year inspired you to really come down here to coaches? Honestly, yes, because mm -hmm. um, I saw <laughs> The first practice that I had with the team, I remember Santos being, first of all, I just remember his laugh. That whole <laughs> practice, his laugh, his laugh, his laugh. Even, when no, one else, even when no one else <laughs> laughed, he laughed. And yeah, I thought that was really funny. And it was, a, <laughs> it was a big switch from other coaches I've had in the past mm -hmm. that are really, you know. Kind of hard. Kind of like, tough kinda, and all that. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so it was a really good, it was a good kind of switch to see that from a coach at this level. Mm -hmm. And so I really enjoyed that. Uh, what would you say has been like the, um, uh, the most funniest moment that has happened <laughs> at practice this year? Uh, one of the funniest moments, let's see. I mean, honestly, 
with the team, it's a surprise because any day can be can bring like a funny moment with the team. Mm -hmm. um, anytime, anytime there's like a joke mm -hmm. with the team, even if it's not funny, Santos makes it hundred percent funnier with his laugh. I love my dad jokes. <laughs> his dad jokes are horrendous. They're his not. Dad jokes. Yeah. They're so bad. They're good. <laughs> you want to tell us okay. a dad joke? Good one right now, but, uh, <laughs> the sauce uh, uh, it's getting so I, I'm trying not to like <laughs> <you're> like <laughs> um, it's light work coach oh that was a good one I remember so there were we was media day I see Sophia number two and number three Aaliyah next to each other and I go one's missing <laughs> I think I remember it was <laughs> yeah, yeah I, think, I remember that one <laughs> I was like yeah, it was two or three <laughs> One's missing. It was quiet. And it was like, <laughs> I was like, I was just losing it by myself. <laughs> yeah, I remember that one now. He was just, <clears throat> uh... All right, well, how about we dip into the next one? Do we have? <laughs> yeah. Come on, coach. <laughs> Wait for us. Okay. This is not that bad. All right, we're dipping into the hot sauce one. All right. Oh, goodness. Oh, that looks like beans. <laughs> that looks like death. Oh, it smells. I'm not gonna do that much. I don't wanna die. Okay. Ready? Cheers. Why is that sweet? It's gonna hurt. Yeah. Okay. 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 Not too bad. Did you make these? Huh? Did you make these? No. <laughs> no, I didn't. His brain is crying. <laughs> no, our student cafeteria made them. My hand is shaking. <laughs> oh. So, coach. Oh, God. <laughs> Half of it's gone. What would you think, what would you say is more important? Uh, raw talent or pure, like, hard work? Hard work. Look, I, I, there's things, and I guess if you look at, any sport in the world mm -hmm. it's cliche but i'm gonna tell you right now at least in my experience you can coach up technique you can coach up conditioning you can coach up everything but if you're talented and you don't want to try or want to do it sometimes the group can tell mm -hmm. and i think hard work is just something that you can't outlook you can always like you can out do a team just by the sheer heart. You don't necessarily have to be the best or best dribbler, best, you know, if it was the case, Lionel Messi, you know, would have won every year and everything he competed, even though he won a lot. But if he doesn't have the people around him that are willing to run, willing to work, it ain't gonna happen. And mm -hmm. so it's, you want some talent, but you want to make sure that you have kids that <clears throat> want to run. Mm -hmm. and want to work. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Thank you, always coach up. What would you say is the most rewarding part <clears throat> about being a coach? Honestly, like, be, winning's always great. Like, mm -hmm. anybody that will tell you, like, trophies are great. But I think the, the you know, years down the line, alumni coming mm -hmm. back and checking up on you, seeing them do great things, seeing your kids get um, recognition, being, you know, just that's why i think this level is so great mm -hmm. you get kids that you can move on to the next level and coaches talk to them and get, give them self recognition right i mean give mm -hmm. them recognition yeah so i think that in reality um just in the whole in summary of it all it's just watching your kids succeed mm -hmm. watching a kid that came through your program succeed and come back and tell you hey I, you know i still remember kids from my days at kofa uh, mm -hmm. high school um you know one of my girls just had her so, uh, senior, uh, soft, yeah, senior name, and it, it's great to see that she got to do what she loved throughout all those years and go to school. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> what would you say is the most same. Uh, challenging part? Okay? <laughs> same, same. Don't worry about it. That <laughs> took everything. <laughs> that, yeah. that took everything. Woo. What would you say is the most challenging part about playing at the college level? I think the most challenging part would be the competition, mm -hmm. maybe. I mean, there's multiple things. There's competition, 
like the competition, not just like on the teams you go against, but competition within the team as well. Always fighting to play, you know, for the minutes in the game, always mm -hmm. fighting for that spot, mm -hmm. always. And thankfully we have good coaches that mm -hmm. encourage us to push ourselves so that we do earn those minutes. Mm -hmm. um, another thing would be like setbacks, any injuries, you know, missing practice. Against your will is always hard, mm -hmm. even though sometimes you don't want to, you know, sprint mm -hmm. all day and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Can be challenging. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and what would you guys say <laughs> to any high school players that are out there that are trying to get to that next level? Honestly, communicate what you want in the recruiting process. Mm -hmm. uh, don't shut any door. Like, the biggest thing I see, the mistake of of high school kids in general, recruitable kids, is that they think they're not good enough or they're too good and it's like, do your homework. You know, I got kids at various levels that could play at other levels that are here and they are, and they love it. Mm -hmm. Or kids that didn't think they were good enough and they're here mm -hmm. and they're doing well. Um, I, I think that, you know, don't be afraid, like let the coaches do like, yes, you can come here or no, you can come here. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of kids just, you know, don't do their homework, uh, you know, uh, just getting themselves out there, make their film, and, you know, don't, don't be afraid to talk to coaches. They're just people, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One thing I would say is believe in yourself. Mm -hmm. Even if you have coaches in high school and club mm -hmm. that, you know, give you that sort of vibe as in, you're not fit for this type of like competition, you're not fit for this level. Mm -hmm. Because in in high school especially is when kids start to doubt whether or not they're good enough to play in, mm -hmm. in college. And I think one thing to understand is the college level is higher and it is different, but that doesn't mean uh, you're any less good of a player to, mm -hmm. you know, work for that spot, to work for that achievement I guess mm -hmm. and so believe in yourself would be one thing I would say mm -hmm. and Santos what would you say is like the <clears throat> the qualifications like that you would look for like in a potential recruit I, there's a few um, I guess the starters is what does the kid want if the kid tells me she wants this amazing city full of things to do like a big metropolitan area I kind of like told her, well, first off, this isn't that. So you know what you want. Um, secondly, you know, look at overall grades. I mean, the film, obviously the talent, the, the touch. I, I like kids that enjoy playing, that love the ball at their feet. Because mm -hmm. if you don't like the ball at their feet, you're gonna, you're literally just, um, you're not comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. And I, you need to be comfortable playing the game. Mm -hmm. I want players that I can, you know, are, are coachable, that want to be here, that want to learn, that want to, you know, mm -hmm. go on to the next level. Mm -hmm. Because if you if you don't, um, it just you know, a kid a kid that knows everything maybe is, doesn't fit here because mm -hmm. there's no room for growth, right? And um, so you just got to find a mixture of of one a kid that wants to be here that fits that mold of standards that doesn't mind the critique. Mm -hmm. um, Kids that you know have some grades to them because again like, they're here for school, and then obviously you know that they can fit the scheme of what we're trying to build mm -hmm. tactically. Mm -hmm. And what, what would you guys be? What would you guys say you would guys be doing if you weren't coaching or playing soccer right now? What would you be doing right mm -hmm. now? <laughs> Probably teaching. Mm -hmm. Probably still teaching at Copa or uh, I guess if I wasn't coaching at all, I'd probably be. Uh, before I came here to Cochise, I was working as a caregiver to uh -huh. a family member mm -hmm. of mine, so I would have continued into that into sort that. of field mm -hmm. and area, but I was also interested in, in going to the community college in my town mm -hmm. to study, uh, to become a dentist a dental assistant mm. and so mm -hmm. I would have been studying that right now if it weren't for 
playing here at Coach's. All right, that sounds good. And with that being said, how about we get into the Coach's Red Hot? <laughs> <laughs> you ready? Bye-bye. <laughs> Okay. You take this one first, Santos. You have to. Why? You have to. <laughs> uh, uh, He's laughing at me. <laughs> oh, come on. Hold on. I gotta see how much. Look at this man. <laughs> All right. You need more much. than that. Oh, come on. That, look what he got. <laughs> Baby. Oh, she's going all in. Oh, I'm scared. Celeste, what is this? Ready? All right, I Celeste got a little for it. Yeah, I gotta go over more. <laughs> My okay, ready? The last one. All right, three, two, one. There we go. Go to Red Hot. It, it throws me a house with this. Oh, there it is. Oh, yeah. There it is. Ooh. So, with balancing academics, athletics, <laughs> and personal life, how would you say you <clears throat> can, you know, how would you say that you can help other people or other players? help like uh, manage that that kind of uh, schedule mm. learning how to learning how to time manage and all that is really important because i know i struggled my first semester a lot mm -hmm. um <laughs> i was in the office a couple times because of my grades and because of certain class expectations that i wasn't mm -hmm. meeting Simply because, <laughs> <laughs> simply because I didn't prioritize time management. And so one thing I did was, <laughs> oh my goodness. One thing I did was just figure out how to uh, time manage, prioritizing, letting some things go mm -hmm. in my, what would you call like fun time. Uh -huh. um, one of the moments that I knew I needed to step up my game <laughs> one uh, one of the times I knew I needed to step up my my game and not, you know, leave my time so loosely was we were leaving for a 5 a.m. game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> we were leaving for a 5 a.m. game and last year one of the rules was be there 10 minutes early. And... <laughs> I got there pretty late, and as I was walking up to the bus, the bus started leaving. Ooh. And so I had to speed walk, and the bus kept leaving. And at the end, I had to knock on the bus, and mm -hmm. thankfully they didn't leave me, but that was an awakening for me to get my stuff together. Mm -hmm. So how would you mm, guys <laughs> mentally prepare for like a, a big game? Um. The process throughout the week. <laughs> the process throughout the week. Um, the process throughout the week. Mm -hmm. I, I love to prepare and put live scenarios through cones and drills <laughs> for the girls to make sure that they are prepared for the game. <laughs> Whether it comes with film, with the practices, whatever it looks like. Mm -hmm. um, and honestly, <clears throat> I mean, have a serious chat with them about, you know, what the game entitles, what we need to do. Um, you know, it, it's no secret that, you know, obviously I believe and, and in fact speak for it, we're, you know, one of the best teams in this conference. Mm -hmm. Honestly, one of the best teams in the nation right now. Mm -hmm. But it comes with, you know, us being able to play our game, being able to, you know, mentally, physically, kind of prepare ourselves for what's coming forward, mm -hmm. what's coming out. <clears throat> what would you say is your favorite part about being a college athlete? <laughs> Like, what's something that a lot of people might not know about that life? My nose on fire. <laughs> oh my god. My nose is on fire. How do you know that's possible? I'm like sweating so much on my I'm hands right now. So the first thing you made me sweat, this one is making my nose like burn. I'm chilling. <laughs> oh, sorry, can you repeat the question? Um, what would you say is, the favorite, is your favorite part about being a college athlete? Like, what would you say? Is it something that a lot, not a lot of people would know about that life? Uh, the people you meet. I think that is a really big thing uh, when becoming a college athlete. Uh, is the people you meet. Mm -hmm. um, when I... <laughs> when I was first 
You got it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't judge it. All right, you all, you can't open it. Please, I need you right now. I'm gonna get so judged for this. I can't open this one. Uh, so you guys did this on purpose. <laughs> all right, you doing it? Okay. Uh, so to answer your question, uh, the. <laughs> <laughs> You're good. Uh, the people you meet, uh, when I was first coming here, um, I didn't know the the different cultures and the different, um, like, yeah, like the different cultures, the different people representing their countries, uh, the amount of that that was coming here to Cochise. You know, a little town in Douglas, Arizona, uh, I didn't know I'd meet, you know, people from Spain, <clears throat> athletes from mm -hmm. Venezuela and stuff like that. And so you really, you really meet good people, you make good friends mm -hmm. that you'd be able to keep for life. And so mm -hmm. that's one thing I'd tell mm -hmm. future student athletes. And what would you say is next for you guys? I'll let you ask that. Uh, for me, hopefully, um, right now, you know, finish this year, mm -hmm. hopefully go into the next, the next year of the season, season 2025. Mm -hmm. And then hopefully after that, transfer to university, whether it is to continue playing soccer or to continue my studies, I'd be perfectly fine with mm -hmm. continuing that. For the program myself, continue building. Um, I'm very blessed the opportunities that I've gotten when it comes to, you know, the administration, the resources, um, everybody's been friendly, but, uh, no, just, the, you know, scouts all over the place that I have, my friends, I think that they have they've been very blessed to know very good people all around mm -hmm. the world, and um, they've been able to supply and help me out, build this program, and I think that, you know, year one, you know, you... you check and balance whatever you liked and disliked and my hope is to continue growing the program and you know eventually get it into a place where you know it can be a place where like Cochise ballers mm -hmm. go there mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah well I want to say thank you guys so much for coming on to this episode of Cochise Red Hot of course thank, special thank you to Coach Santos <laughs> and Coach wait no no Coach <laughs> <laughs> C Celesta Oh. oh, I want to say I want to give a special <laughs> thank you to Mauricio and the Coaches College Ooh, Union Cafe for providing the salsas for this episode. Don't make them mad. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> and make sure you guys go check out mm, uh, whenever you, uh, the the game. I'm like <laughs> losing it right now. Make sure you go check out um, whenever they're uh, they're here at the. At the Douglas campus, it's free, completely free, and you should go watch it because it's honestly, it's amazing to see. And I'll say thank you guys so much for coming on. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you for having us. Thank you. Can I have this one? Can I have that one? <laughs> <laughs>